Everyone talks about ocean plastic, but what about the rivers quietly carrying that waste to the sea? There's a hidden crisis flowing through our cities and countryside, and it's being ignored. In this video, we uncover the plastic river problem no one is talking about, but everyone should be. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned as we reveal what's really happening upstream. 1. Beyond the Famous Five, ignored rivers leak plastic too. Most headlines focus on a few rivers, but many smaller ones leak plastic into oceans daily. Unmonitored waterways in Africa, Asia, and Latin America are silently polluting the seas. These rivers often pass through rural areas with no recycling, collection, or landfills. Plastic dumped here includes daily use items like bags, wrappers, sachets, and containers. As they lack oversight, there is no data or international pressure to clean them up. Floods and storms wash even more plastic from banks, farms, and markets into the water. With no filtration systems, all that plastic reaches the ocean unfiltered and unchecked. Two, forgotten tributaries feed the plastic beast. Major rivers get the blame, but the real plastic flow starts in forgotten tributaries. Tiny streams and canals from city outskirts carry loads of plastic daily to main rivers. Often these are ignored by both national governments and international watchdogs. People living nearby use them as open sewers and dump yards for all plastic waste. Slum areas, market districts, and informal settlements contribute most of the pollution. When it rains, these tributaries swell and move massive debris into larger waterways. Plastic collected in rice paddies, fields, and ditches enters these streams like clockwork. 3. Urban drainage systems turned plastic channels. Urban drainage ditches were never designed to handle modern plastic waste flows. Today, they function as open rivers of plastic in major cities across the developing world. They collect wrappers, bottles, takeout containers, and broken toys from city streets. During monsoon season, these channels become raging torrents of plastic sludge. This waste rushes unfiltered into rivers, lakes, and eventually into coastal waters. City infrastructure rarely includes filters or traps to stop plastic from escaping. When drain covers clog, streets flood so locals remove them, worsening plastic flow. Four, sacred rivers polluted by tradition and plastic. In many cultures, rivers are sacred, but they are also some of the most polluted. Traditional offerings now include plastic-wrapped food, synthetic fabrics, and packets. During religious festivals, rivers receive mountains of plastic from rituals and gifts. What was once biodegradable has been replaced by non-degradable synthetic waste. People do not realize that these holy offerings are now polluting ecosystems. Even governments avoid restricting such practices due to religious sensitivities. The result is an annual spike in river plastic during festival seasons worldwide. 5. Tourism's Hidden River Footprint Tourist hotspots near rivers often become plastic dumping grounds during peak season. Hotels, cafes, souvenir shops, and tourist boats generate high plastic waste volumes. In many developing countries, this waste is dumped behind resorts or into rivers directly. Tourists unknowingly participate in this by using disposable plastic products daily. Water bottles, wrappers, straws, and bags are discarded with no waste separation. Local vendors lack the infrastructure to process or recycle the influx of tourist trash. Guides and boat operators often toss waste into rivers when tourists are not watching. 6. Plastic Mining – The Black Market of Riverbeds In some regions, riverbeds are mined for plastic to resell or burn for quick income. Scavengers dig into polluted riverbeds and collect plastic buried in silt and sludge. They dry it along riverbanks, sort it, and sell it to informal recycling or burning sites. This exposes them to heavy metals, chemicals, parasites, and waterborne diseases. Much of the collected plastic is of poor quality and cannot be recycled profitably. Some burn it for fuel, releasing toxic fumes into nearby air and water systems. Children are often involved in this work, lacking gloves or protection of any kind. Local governments turn a blind eye or quietly encourage it to clean the riverbed. 7. Dams and Plastic Accumulation Zones Dams block water flow, but they also trap massive amounts of plastic upstream. Reservoirs behind dams become plastic soups filled with everything from bags to bottles. Plastic floats accumulate near turbine inlets, creating engineering and ecological issues. This waste clogs filters, harms aquatic life, and interferes with electricity generation. 
Sediment beds beneath these dams often hide layers of microplastic and toxic debris. Fishermen working in dam reservoirs report dead fish and damaged nets from sharp plastic. In some regions, dam staff must manually remove tons of plastic before operations resume. Rainstorms wash in new waves of plastic, overwhelming existing containment measures. 8. Plastic-poisoned wetlands and river mouths. Wetlands and estuaries are nature's filters, but now they are clogged with plastic waste. These areas are critical for birds, fish, and amphibians, but they trap floating garbage. Plastic gets entangled in reeds, mangroves, and roots, damaging delicate ecosystems. Animals get stuck, suffocated, or poisoned by plastic hidden in these muddy shallows. Many migratory birds pick up plastic and transport it across continents. River mouths often deposit plastic into protected wetlands, forming plastic deltas. Pollution here is hard to clean because machinery cannot operate in swampy terrain. Plastic decomposes slowly here, releasing chemicals into the water and sediment. 9. Climate change and plastic river synergy. Climate change is worsening plastic river pollution in surprising and dangerous ways. Higher temperatures weaken plastic, causing it to flake into microplastics more quickly. Floods and droughts disturb plastic that was once buried or settled deep in riverbeds. Melting glaciers and rising seas change water flow, carrying plastic in new directions. Storm surges push river waste further inland or flood more towns with plastic-strewn waters. Climate refugees in camps along rivers generate unregulated plastic waste in huge volumes. Extreme weather events damage infrastructure and spill plastic from dumps into rivers. Climate and plastic pollution are not separate. They now work together destructively. 10. Why it is time to talk about the plastic rivers no one mentions. Every silent, ignored, or unmonitored river adds up to global plastic disaster daily. They do not make headlines, but their impact travels thousands of miles through oceans. Without local data, maps, or community education, these rivers remain invisible threats. Plastic enters through small actions one bottle, one bag, but scales to global crisis. Governments prioritize famous rivers, while thousands of smaller ones get no attention. Each of these rivers represents a chance to stop pollution before it reaches the sea. The best cleanup strategy is prevention at the source, not reaction once it reaches beaches. NGOs, scientists, and local leaders must unite to trace and monitor every river's waste load. Awareness campaigns should highlight underreported regions with urgent river waste problems. The plastic river problem isn't just a local issue, it's a global ticking time bomb. If we don't act now, our rivers will keep feeding a growing ocean disaster. Don't forget to like this video to raise awareness, subscribe for more environmental truths, and share it with someone who still thinks plastic waste disappears once it's out of sight. The rivers are speaking, are we listening?